What's up, YouTube? <laughs> I'm back. I had to call mama. I had to call my wife. Um, all right, let's get the chainsaw chains. I don't know. Everybody has different opinions on it. And everybody has facts on it and all this stuff. Um, and everybody has, you know, the myth thing, and there's not myths. But anyway. Um, and there's a lot of people go through motions, and it works for them, and they know ever... There's a lot of people who don't ever know what they're doing. They just go through the motions and it's working. Um, and they don't ever see in detail what they're doing or why they're doing it. You know what I'm talking about? And that's, that's, and that is, this happens all the time. People go through motions at work, at jobs. They don't ever know what they're doing or why they're doing it. They just do what is asked of them. And uh, it just works. But I've been doing this so long. Don't, I'm not talking myself up, but anyway. But anyway. But anyway. Um, I'm not claiming to be a professor at filing, but do I think that anybody can sharpen a chain better than me? No. Do I think I can get the tip-top performance out of my saws? I do. Um... You, you can watch a little a couple of my 290 videos and how to cut. And there's that one. I tripped, fell that pine tree using a Dutchman. And I did a one finger cut in it. That's how a saw should cut. And that's just a 50cc chainsaw cutting through that 18 inch wood. And it just falls right through it. But anyway. But anyway, Nate. Back to chainsaw chain. Um, there's. If you. If you look at what the manufacturer says, they, they want the teeth to stay the same. Do they have to be identical? No, not really. They don't. And can you sharpen, have one short one and one long one? Yeah, you can. For this reason, not every tooth is cutting when it's making a pass through the, the wood, through the curve. Not every, not every tooth is always cutting. Because whenever that... This is what happens in a, in a chain. Whenever whenever the tooth hits, it kind of it gets pulled into the wood. It comes it unseats from the bar, and it kind of dives like a dolphin, just like that. It, it unseats itself because it's it's angled up like this. When it angles, it it unseats itself, planes through the wood, and just like that. And the chip the chip passes just underneath the tooth. It don't get down into the gullet. It passes underneath the tooth and it's expelled out the back. Then it's it's pulled out you by the by the uh, wrecker behind it um, or the side plate you know what I'm talking about because you got curf there it, whatever is pulling is pulling it it's that's why it's called a raker or a depth gauge is because it's it kind of pulls the, the chip ex, expelled chip out the severed chip out it pulls it and the this maybe the side plate of, of the next tooth pulls it out. Anyway, but everybody says, oh, it's a myth. You don't have to have them all the same. We well, don't have to, but is it good to have them all the same? It's very good. Anybody that's performance cutting, I guarantee you they're not going to have one short tooth and one long tooth, but why? Because why? Because they want the most maximum performance they're going to get out of that tooth, out of that saw. But if you're running a saw every day on a job like we do, and you hit a rock or a nail and, knock and have to have one or two short teeth, that's all, you ain't going to see a lot of loss in performance because that 0.5 seconds ain't going to matter because you ain't got the competitor next to you. It's just going to, you're just going to have to hold the saw a little longer. You know what I'm talking about? And it's, it don't, don't really affect you directly that much. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. Hint away. Um... So, therefore, you don't have to have them all the same, but it's kind of great to have them all the same if you want maximum performance out of your chainsaw. And, and, and think about this, and that, that's hand filing. Whenever you grind, every tooth is identical anyway. So, whenever you watch Buck and Billy Ray's, I said the name, whenever you watch him cutting and them saws are eating through that paper softwood um, off of a grind, you know them teeth are all the same. Even when he's hand filing, you know, he's not really taking... I mean, he did the experiment, and uh, 
and that's why a lot of people say a grind cuts faster than a hand file because hand file is not always consistent. But somebody that can really hand file, can fine tune a chain like I can, like I do, a good hand filed chain will out cut a grind because it's fine tuned to the situation. And not saying everybody should hand file or not saying everybody should grind. I'm saying grind is super consistent across the board. Hand filing, it can it varies. I mean, by stroke and by you know personal judgment. So, but I, I've been hand filing for 31 years now. I started cutting whenever I was about seven years old, same age as my boy. And at uh, that same time, my daddy wasn't going to sharpen my chains, so he demonstrated how to do it several times. And it took me a while to see what he was seeing. First, I was going through motions, and it was kind of working. And then later on, I started developing the eye for the details of, of what I'm doing. You know, because sometimes um, you change the angle of that tooth a little bit like this. You change the angle of the tooth, and you're cutting. That saw is bogging and hanging up all the daggone time because you're it's spearing the wood instead of having a nice, nice plane where it just planes through the wood. It's, it's, it's spirit and it's going to hang up all the time. So avoid like over steep angles unless you have a super, super powerful saw and it's still going to hang up. Um, so, you know, kind of don't vary from the angle angle much unless you're doing some uh, a lot of ripping. If you're doing a lot of uh, ripping, you know, you can, you can, if you're doing ripping, if you're doing kind of both, cutting across grain and with grain, you can kind of, Flatten that out a little bit, and it'll and the the performance will be better on both. It'll be it'll be about the same, not quite as good with cross grain as it is with grain. You know what I'm saying? So, but uh, try to avoid steeper angles because it really, um, it really, for one, it'll pull teeth. I mean, if you if you're really short on your teeth, it'll it'll not it'll pull teeth right off. You know, because you know it's hanging up in that wood because it's getting a real solid bite. It's like driving a nail in the wood instead of running a plane like whittling. Instead of whittling, you're daggering it. So anyway, hope everybody kind of understands that. I, I can't tell because we're not talking and you're not like, yeah, buddy, I got it. Yeah, Go on the next. You said it five times. Go on the next. Go to the, go to the next topic. Come on. Come on. We're waiting on you to ramble. We'll ramble, 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 ramble. Okay. So that's kind of a miss about long and short. On my uh, ground saws, I, I, I'm not really as tedious with the, long, the length of my teeth. I try to keep them the same. I don't really count strokes. I just kind of, and I don't micrometer the, te the teeth, but, you know, I try to keep them about the same length and, and uh, keep my top plate angle and everything about the same. And, and then my rakers, I'll... I'll uh, hit them according to what I'm cutting, whether it's poplar, red oak, white oak, hickory, pine, it don't matter. You know, I, I kind of adjust it to whatever I'm cutting. So, when it comes to my top handle saws, I, I want them teeth to be the same length because um, the performance of that saw being 100% consistent means everything to me. It does mean everything to me because... Uh, it, if I'm wanting to cut something off and let it, let it drop straight down, you know what I'm talking about? I mean, well, I can get into all, all the 25, 30 different ways I cut in the wood, but I, I want whenever that's whenever I want that saw to cut, I want it to cut. Or if I, you know what I'm talking about? We're communicating now. So, on my top handle saws, I want to be precise, almost like a grind. But I'm still going to fine tune it in my own little ways. So, whenever the thing is, it's a semi chisel chain. It's a semi chisel chain, right? Is what we're talking about now on this top end of saw. So, the, the thing you really, really have to do on a semi chisel chain, this saw is pretty already sharp. The thing on the semi-chisel chain, you kind of have to do something that you really don't want to do, or that's if you 
if you change, start from change the law and you pay attention, you have to kind of do something that you don't want to get out of the routine of doing, and that's kind of watching the working corner. You kind of don't look at the working corner on on the, because there's really no working corner. So you kind of focus on the depth and angle your file. You know what I'm talking about? Chainsaw bar. On the angle of your file. So what you're looking at is the angle of the file according to your bar. You, you want to keep that file as parallel level with the bar as you can on every stroke. Just just be smooth. You know what I'm talking about? You don't have to get into it because it's a top handle saw. It shouldn't be too dull anyway. So you're going to just, just do some nice, really smooth strokes. Because if you've ever sharpened a knife, those little burrs and stuff on a knife, whenever you run a steel over a knife, I mean, I don't know if you, ever, you guys... That, that's just, that's just fine-tuning it. So whenever, you, whenever you're bearing down with this file, whenever you're getting hard on it and rough, it's, going, it's leaving a rough finish. So whenever you kind of just be smooth with it, whenever you're smooth with it, I mean, you can almost, you can almost just file it with two fingers. After you, after you get desired depth, just do some smooth strokes, and that thing will be razor sharp. I mean, if you watched the video the other day, you seen me nick my finger, and I just barely nicked it, and it's like a razor blade. And I promise you, they are razor blades. So just get the, get the depth you want with the first three or four strokes, and get the tooth, your length, and then, then just do one or, two, one or two nice, really smooth strokes on it. And that's what I do. That's exactly how I do it. I get, because I, I look at the depth of my file. I watch the depth of my file on, on my top plate. You know what I'm talking about? Um, end of the file, right? I, I watch the depth of my file just like that. That's about where you want it. Just like that. And that's what I watch. Just like that. I want that my file to come not over it. You don't want it up here because you see my hand. See how thin that would be. That your top plate edge would be that thin, and all that's going to do is just fold over. So if you're back here, you, I mean, you can picture the file right here, right? You see there, kind of right there. That this this is the the top plate of the file. You see that nice wedge? That's a nice wedge. That's about what you need. But if you come on up here, it gets really thin. So what you you'll come you, what the, the rule of thumb is a, a fourth you go three quarters of the way you leave a fourth of the the file above it so so and it leaves you that nice wedge I mean you can look and see what the same thing I'm looking at so if you come on up it's going to make a real thin thing which which you would think would be sharper for one pass it might be. But that, that, all that's going to do is just fold over. I mean, that's going to fold over so easy. So you get, that's why they say, because uh, you're getting the right angle on that cutter. All that is a plane, like plane and wood. Every tooth is just a plane, plane wood. Like, like if you was doing woodworking and you was running that plane over it. So it's just a plane. So just keep your depth close to, the, to that. That's the, that's, that's the most important thing on sharpening chain is the top plate. The top plate working corner and angle. You know what I'm talking about? Your cutter angle. Because you, 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 can, you can vary the top plate angle this way as far as the cutter. What we was just talking about a minute ago. You, uh, try, don't avoid steeper, but you can, they can be off this way just a little bit back and forth. And uh, you probably won't notice a whole lot. In the in the performance of the saw, unless you even even over short and long, but um, the most important thing really is the top plate depth. Don't go too deep into the gullet, or this is going to be really thin. That's that's why I don't talk about the gullet. That's the gullet is an afterthought. You know what I'm talking about? So you got a uh, you got a tooth right here, and you're filing it. Just say the tooth. And then as you file it, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not a YouTuber, I'm not a videoer. 
anyway, I think I think we're all on the same page. The deeper you go into the gullet, the thinner that top plate's going to be. You do not want that top plate on top of that pile because it, it's just going to be thin, paper thin. It's going to fold over after maybe eight cuts. But uh, I promise you, um, I, I've ran a, a good sharp chain, filed right. I've ran them for two days in, in on jobs. If it's in decent wood, you know, if it ain't dirty wood, uh, you can run them. You can cut several rick of wood, make probably 70, 80 cuts easy in hardwood. Not not softwood, but hardwood. But anyway, Mr. Nate, that's how I do it. Um, recap here. I don't want to dip my file. That's not it. Bit. Okay, recap, Nate. The most important thing is your depth, right? And you keep this on 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 a sit on a semi chisel. Do not work, don't really work the, watch the working corner. Um, if it's if it's messed up, clean it up. And then after you clean it up, it's gonna after you, after you clean it up. If it's if it's been damaged, after you get after what I that's that's exactly what I do, honestly. I, uh, the first thing I do, this if if I have a really damaged chain, let's go over this thing. I know this is going to be a full chisel, but I'll show you. Let me stop and turn it around. It's like 20 minutes. Sorry, buddy. I really apologize. Hopefully you have hung through and watched the whole thing. And I say I probably said the same thing 10 times, but uh, let me let me show you out here real fast. Okay, this is where I do all my filing. Sorry. This is where I do all my filing. You can see all this filing. I file. I, I do it all right here. <coughs> <coughs> and I'm going to show you this tooth. My boy destroyed. See that? A lot of people don't even notice. I mean, you'll notice that cutting. But you can kind of see how it's folded over just a little bit. And I'm going to straighten, I'm going to, what I do first thing. What I do first thing, Mr. Nate, is, uh, you know, this is the angle of the tooth. I'll come this way, almost flat, and I'll cut, cut all that off until my tooth is like a square. And this is me, Nate. Not everybody else. You see that? That tooth is almost square. That right there, and that's how I've done this whole chain. A tooth is almost square. Now I got a blank canvas to work with because it's blunt. There's no. Uh, you, you see that? There's really no working. Well, that tooth is trash. I I just got to a bad tooth. But all you look at, you look at that tooth right there. It's pretty much square. All I did was just clean that nasty up. And there's no, uh, there's no really no working corner on it or no um, cutter at all on it. So I, I clean it up. I get all that trash off. And then, then I'll work, then I'll work my angle down. I'll just, I'll work my angle back the way I want it. I'll just watch that line, honestly. If you look, get it back to that line. Get it where I want it. Get my nice smooth strokes. 
I don't baby it that much usually, but. Come on, baby. Sorry. Okay, you see it? See how the the uh, the guideline and my tooth are almost identical? Now let's get under here and look at this. See that cutter? See how smooth that is? If uh, if you look at your cutter, Nate, if you went too deep in that gullet, it'll have just a little bit of a lip on the top. You'll be able to see a shadow line. Like right there, you don't see no shadow. Here, I'll show you. I'm going to go just too deep into the gullet, and you'll see You'll see what I'm talking about, okay? That, that's, that's perfect depth right there. Now I'm going to go too deep. I'm gonna show you what you how you can tell. And this really ain't that deep. Okay. Let me just show you how deep it is. I mean you can look at the sea. See that C? It looks like a perfect C, don't it? Now look at this. Let's swing it under here. Come on, baby. Work for me. Doggone, it ain't, it ain't going to zoom in, is it? Okay, let's try how I did it this last time. Sorry, Nate. Come on, just focus, just one time. You can almost see that shadow line right there. You see, remember last time? Come on. You see, uh, you, I can, you can barely see it right there. Come on in. You see that shadow line right there? I can see it. Come on. there <laughs> oh god hey you see what i mean where's buck and Billy ray's eye lens but you i mean you can see what i'm talking about right there you see that shadow on the on the tip of that come on that's where that's paper thin and it's way too thin sorry sorry guys i apologize please bear with me if if you can just work with me one time, phone. Because this is super, super, super important. I know you guys can see it because I can see it through my through my phone. But I, I want to give you a good look at it. But you can see that shadow line, right? Well, come on, baby. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 oh. Is he going to do it? Come on, phone. Oh, oh, Lord have mercy. I thought I was going to do it. 
anyway guys i apologize i'm not a videoer i'm not equipped but you can still almost even through this fuzziness you can see that line you can see the shadow it's just, it's just there right there i can see it perfect right there. you see that shadow line on the very edge of that cutter you don't want that so now i'm gonna get it back to where i had it well let me uh let me just do this again show you how you see how deep that is that's almost on top of the tooth you don't want it on top of the chain it's a it's in a way past where it's rounded over you see what i'm saying that's too deep so you don't you don't go too deep in the gullet. I know everybody's preaching the gullet, get the gullet, but if you get the gullet, you're messing up your top plate. So I'm gonna straighten this back out and show you the proper depth. And the way I do that, and whenever, because uh, a lot of times when you're filing, you like when you, I got the chains perfect. Um, if my angle's good and the edge is just bad, I'll just turn my file up like, like straight up and down, and I'll just knock the, the, the edge off of it and leave my angle. And then, then all I do is just work, work my file down to where I want it. I, and I, I went way deep into it too, so earlier that's why it took me just a second. But we'll look and see if we can get this beautiful. Oh, you can already see no shadow line. And if you look at the sea, why is it why is it zooming in now like a, a like a beauty? You see no shadow line right there. I know you can see it. You shouldn't be able to see no shadow line on the top that. Cause that shadow is just where that pay, that tooth is super baby thin. I mean, it's thin as a razor blade, which a razor blade is super sharp. Don't get me wrong, but it ain't gonna last too long. It ain't the same as a plane. So that's super sharp. Like you see that? You see it tearing my my? I'm just barely rubbing my finger across it. It's just tearing my skin right there. You see the little cuts, but it's sharp, super sharp. That's that's how your top plate should look, Nate. If you if you ever if you get wondering how to tell about what you're looking at and the fine details, instead of just going through the motions or or uh, not saying you do, I'm not saying you just get to go it, but I'm saying if you want to know for certain what you're looking at and why you're doing something, that's what that's how you can tell that top plate's too thin. And that's that's exactly why that's exactly why you don't use a smaller file than what they recommend because I'm gonna stop it I'm gonna stop it and turn around because I don't know what, if you're looking at me or not and most likely you wouldn't. All right, um, and that's exactly why you don't use a smaller file than what they recommend is because let's say your top plate is this thick. Your top let's just say your top plate's this thick on a 3/8 file on a 3/8 chain. On a uh, 325 chain, it's going to be thinner. So the circumference of that file, Nate, because you, and you're, you're going to be on the same page with me right now, Nate, because you're a smart guy. You use your brain. The circumference of that file, if you use that little bitty file on a uh, 3 8 pitch chain, which has a thicker thing on it, if you use a smaller file, that top plate is going to be super baby thin. It, it may cut for like one or two cuts, and it, but it ain't going to last, especially when that chain starts getting hot. And they do get hot. All chains are going to get hot. So let's use the same, let's use the recommended size file because the, that top plate is a certain thickness. Thickness. Okay. But back to what I was saying. Let me set you back down here. On a semi-chisel chain, like I said, it's something I'd... It's something that you don't want to teach 
on a square on a square ground or square or sit full chisel or a lot of those different chains on a full chisel square ground round ground you focus on the worker corner and the top plate um, but a semi chisel is going to stay sharper a little bit longer in dirt a little dirtier wood or you know if you're like if you skidded some logs and it's got a little bit of dirt on it and you knocked it off a semi chisel chain is going to stay sharper a little bit longer but it's kind of deceiving on how do you know if it's sharp or not and the, the way you know that thing is going to be sharp is like we just showed um, on your bar uh, and I'm saying it over again I've probably said this same thing ten times you keep your bar your file parallel with your bar I mean I know parallel is like this you want to keep it parallel with the bar. I mean, I'm talking about on the same axis. I don't, I don't even know if I'm saying that right. But anyway, you keep that bar perfectly at a 90 degree. I know, I know, I, I know, I know on, I know it's saying like 10 degrees sometimes, but, uh, It'll say you have like a 10 degree, but 10 degrees, honestly, you ain't really, this is being super consistent. I mean, this be super, super consistent. I run all mine. And what only thing this is going to do, Nate, whenever you keep it parallel, it's going to, uh, I don't know how to say this. It's just, it's not going off of factory. It's there's variances in everything. Whenever you're torquing a, a motor, a, a head on a motor, it'll say torque it to 45 foot pounds plus or minus 10 10 foot pounds. You know what I'm saying? So on that little bit of a variance, uh, you ain't on a hand filing. You ain't gonna be able to notice it. Even there's no way you're gonna notice it. There's no way you're gonna be able to adjust a hand, uh, ten degrees, exactly ten degrees by hand filing it, or even uh, using a uh, a uh, file guide that changes that that steel three in one thing. You're not, you're not gonna get that ten degrees out of it. The way you're gonna get that ten degrees is in a grinder. You know what I'm talking about? In that grinder, you, that's the only way you're gonna get that ten degrees in that uh, tooth. So, what I'm recommending to you, Nate, is uh, since there is a little variance in everything, there's, there's leeway in everything, focus on keeping that file completely at a 90 or parallel to that tooth and focus on the top plate depth according to that chain and your, and your, uh, parallel, your file being parallel to that tooth. And you're going to have a perfect, perfect cut and saw. I promise. I promise you, buddy. And then, then of course, you got your rakers. And you can use a raker gauge. Um, but what I do, this is me, since I've filed, I've used these chains for years. I'm going to say 15 years I use the same, same chain, same brand of chain. Because I find something I like, find something that works in all these different species. Because I've tried different things. New things come out. Uh, new brand is a chain, but in all honesty, a lot of as many chains as I've used, the, the designs are pretty much the same, all, well, almost exactly the same. You couldn't look at one chain and not tell the difference. Um, I, well, I, well, I don't have a, I've got a piece of crap phone, but if we was here together, I could show you. I got, I got a steel chain because I, I didn't. They didn't have no more Oregon chains. Well, I, was, I got my chain, so I got a steel chain and uh, the only difference oh I don't know where I did with it Nate oh Nate oh Nate that's a steel chain and you can't you ain't gonna be able to tell me holding that thing up here but anyway let me get this uh, let me get an organ chain real quick.
organ chain out of the organ box. Okay, right away, you can be able to see a difference. You can see the finishes. This thing, the, the chrome is, looks totally different on it. The chrome's different. Um, everything's just, you know, as far as designs, I mean, you can't tell no difference in them at all. They look identical. Same, pretty much the same. Everything looks the same. It's just the finishes on them, you know, and that that may just be how they was uh, the uh, hardness of them or whatever. The chrome, the chrome, the chrome all on it. But uh, I, I've used them both. I got them both. You can see. I prefer the. Uh, I do prefer the organ. Um, everybody says, well, but the the tooth is harder on the the uh, steel. Um, I can tell it's harder because like whenever you sharpen a steel, you have a little bit of the chrome left. You have a chrome lip sometimes. And I don't like that. Whenever I, whenever I sharpen an organ chain, whenever I'm completely done, and everybody's like, oh, you can always have some of the chrome left. Well, whenever I'm completely done sharpening my saw, when I take them last few smooth strokes to fight, you know, to get all that little burrs and to get that thing razor sharp, whenever I get them little fine strokes on there, that little, little flakes of chrome just come right off. On a steel, they kind of, they don't, they linger. They're hard to get them off. So you're going to sit there and play with it. And, but uh, that's the only thing I can tell the difference between the steel and this, this right here. But I like... I, as far as cutting wise, I can't tell a difference. As far as how they cut, um, but it's like a a phobia or a, or a whatever you want to call it um, pet peeve. I just, whenever I get it sharp, I want it to see I want to see a picture perfect tooth. And with a steel, I have that little chrome lip, little bitty chrome, maybe a dab here or there. And I'm always trying to get that, and then I end up having a a shorter tooth than I really want. So, Nate, I hope that helps, buddy. Um, if it's too much rambling, please don't watch it. Uh, just let me know it's too much rambling, uh, and I'll try to make another one without rambling. But hopefully, there's a lot of information there, and I apologize about this in and out zooming. But uh, hopefully, you can see that really. You can see that little shadow line on top, and that's where that that tooth is like that is that paper thin instead of having a nice wedge like that. So whenever you get too down in that gullet, it's going to be have a paper thin on it, and it's just going to fold over whenever you start cutting. You know, it may not do it the first cut, but after you cut for a few minutes or and get that saw hot, it'll it'll fold over. But whenever you don't don't worry about that working corner on the on the semi chisel, focus on the on the depth, and uh, of course, make keep your angle. A lot of times, a lot of times they don't have that. Um, I'm on that all. All of these, they don't have the guide on the back. So, um, so this, I'm gonna just go right back with you, Nate, just a second. Um, this is what I this this is what I do to be consistent on on my on filing. I do this on every on every one, every every chain I sharpen, except for over here, over there on that I don't. But on a on a bar where I, I can just run it like this, what I'll do, I'll get. Um, I'll get all these. See that? Where am I? At? Where am I? At? Right there. Let me. Let me. I'm gonna stop it. Okay. This is what I do, Mr. Nate. Um. I'll. I'll file this one. And I'll file that one. And I'll file that one. I'll stay. I'll stay the, the same. On the same direction. I'll file all. All to the left. I'll do all these. Why? Because I'm getting in a routine, and they're all going to be on the same angle. And I know I'm ruining this chain by just doing this. You see? I'll do all this one side, and that'll be pretty much the same angle. And you're not having to try to readjust your angle, trying to get in a groove. Um, so after you get in a, a rhythm, you get yourself a rhythm, you got muscle memory, right? So you're going to keep doing that. Bang, and you're going to do the next one. Same angle. And that's why, like me and Buck and Billy Ray... We can just get lay down there and just do it, and it's just second nature. So we're just uh, 
going through our motions. Yeah, I know that looked like shit, but um, I'm just going through my motions, getting it's muscle memory, right? So I go through all to the left, then I'll come back, and then I'll go all to the right. Bang! I'll get all these, all this direction, all that. Bang, bang. You know what I'm saying? I'll do all one direction. That way, all my angles are the same. I'll do all the other direction. Way all my angles and the stuff are the same. That's the way I do it. Hopefully, I help you. If it don't, just say, "Hey, man, that was no help." Yeah, I even know it was like 30 minute video. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Hopefully, that helped. I guess I'll say it one more time. Try to keep those angles the same on the as far as the tooth. Um, they, they don't have to be 100 percent the same because uh, that stuff you can really tweak, but don't go too steep. So uh, try to uh, try to stay around 30 degrees if you can. You know, 30 degrees is really good angle. So try to stay around 30 degrees on. And I know you can't really measure it this way, but um, you can. You can get one of those uh, filer adjuster, uh, not adjuster, but a guide thing, and then you kind of visualize it. You can get, a, you can train your mind, okay? And I'm pretty sure you know this because you're a pretty smart guy. But that's how I do the, the semi chisel: is I make sure my file is perfectly at a 90 with the bar, and I'm watching the 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 top plate the top plate edge more than the working corner. I don't even focus on the working corner. If it's trashed, I'll knock that working corner off. That way, I gotta, like I did that one over there, I'll knock it off, and then I'll start have a blank canvas, and then I can work my edge back in and work my depth down. That's how I do it. It may not work for you or anybody else, but I kind of, hopefully you can see what you need to be looking at to really know your sharp, solid is sharp, and that's what you need to look at. Uh, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and post it, and uh, if it's helpful, buddy, i Appreciate you watching, but if it's not, I'm sorry. Sorry about the rambling.